Our homework okay so for homework I asked you to complete a, a worksheet about writing three facts about baby blue whales the first homework I would like to share with you is dummies well done dummy okay so we did a reading comprehension on Friday all about baby blue whales which are called calves okay so uh, you had to pick one topic and write three facts about it. So Dami chose how it breathes. So he tells me that a baby blue whale breathes with its blowholes. A baby whale has two blowholes and a baby blue whale needs to come up to the surface of the water to breathe. So amazing, Dami, you told me three very interesting facts that are correct and you drew a beautiful picture of a mommy or daddy blue whale and its calf. So well done. The next homework I would like to share with you is Zui Ming's. Well done, Zui Ming. Zui Ming has decided he will write about how it eats. He said, whales don't use teeth, they use baleen. So baleen are the comb-like filters that whales have in their mouth. So they don't chew using teeth like we do, they just have a filter system to use when they eat. He also said, when whales eat, they open their mouth wide, which is exactly true. They open their mouth very, very wide, and they let in lots of water and lots of other things, which is why they need the baleen to be able to filter it out. And he also said that whales eat krill. You are exactly right. When whales are six months old, they can start to eat food like krill, but before that, they just drink their mother's milk. Well done, guys. Um, those of you who uploaded your homework are as follows. Ba, Simon, Zui Ming, Kitty, Jenny, Kaki, Dami, and Michael. So well done to you all for uploading. Now, I have to say that I think one or two students, um, they wrote three facts, but they wrote a fact about its size, how it eats, and how it breathes. But the instructions read, and what I asked for you to do was to pick one topic and write three facts about the same one topic. But some of you wrote three facts about three different topics, um, which was still very interesting to read. However, it's not quite what I asked you to do. But thank you to those of you who uploaded your homework. Okay, let's get started on today's lesson. So today's lesson is very exciting. Today we are learning about a movie study. That means we are going to study a movie. Now, does anyone know what movie we're going to study? Simon, what movie are we going to study? Okay, it's, what? I know it's the movie it's about the Finding Nemo. I know that. I already watched it. Very good. Well done, Simon. We are going to watch Finding Nemo. Now, I'm hoping that most of you have already watched at least part one. Please click the raise your hand button if you have watched part one of the movie, at least. Maybe you've watched the whole thing. Okay, most people have their hands up. That's great. Okay, going to wait a little longer. Good, amazing, five students. Okay, well, we will quickly run through the main events today for those of you who didn't watch it, so don't worry about that. Okay, so today we're going to learn about Finding Nemo, which is very exciting. Finding Nemo is one of my favorite movies. Okay, so what are we actually going to do in the movie study? Well, we're going to learn about the story structures and settings. We're going to learn about different character traits. We're going to learn about the character relationships. We're going to discuss causes and effects in the movie, and we're going to learn about the life lessons that we can take and put into real life scenarios from the movie. Um, this is also a very important question. You should have been sent an email with this beautiful movie study notebook. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to print this out. Please click the raise your hand button if you have already got this notebook printed out for you. And Ba, Ba, you have a booklet? Um, I have a booklet, but it is upstairs. Okay, if you have your booklet, go get it. Okay. Quick, quick, quick. Jenny, you have a booklet too? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Is it with you? Oh, good girl. Lovely. Beautiful. Well done. So this booklet is super, super important to our lessons. All of our homework, all of our worksheets, they are in that booklet. So I know that it was sent to you yesterday. Um, quite late and that's okay so I know that some of your parents were not in work so they were unable to print it out for you and that's absolutely fine so what I'm going to ask for you to do today is I'm going to ask you to uh, ask your parents to print this out for you in work today or at home because it is super super important that we all get this thank you Bo, for getting your booklet good boy well done okay so this is what we're going to be working from for the next couple of weeks. It's got all of the worksheets and homework, so you will need to get this printed out. So please make sure that you tell mom and dad how important it is to have this booklet. And every time we have class, I want you to have the booklet with you, booklet with you when we are learning, because we're going to like write things down together. So today, we're actually not going to set any homework for you, because only two students have their booklet. So we will do our homework tomorrow during class time, and I'm hoping that tomorrow all of you will have a booklet by then. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so what is Finding Nemo? Finding Nemo is a movie. What genre is the movie? Well, it's actually a lot of different genres. It's animation, comedy, family, and adventure. Animation means that it has been animated. And the word animated is another word that is similar to drawing. So what it means is someone has drawn all of this film. It's been animated by special artists using special computers. It's also a comedy film. There are jokes and we laugh during the film. It's a family film, which means it's friendly for all ages. Babies can watch it right up to grannies and grandpas. It's also an adventure movie, so there are lots of action plots in this. We go on a super amazing journey to help find Nemo, and there are many obstacles along the way that keep us really interested. The producers are Walt Disney and Pixar Animations, so two very famous companies that make movies such as Monsters, Inc. and Cinderella and Mulan and lots of different movies. The directors are Andrew Stanton and Lee Uncrich. The directors have a very important role to play. The director's job means that they tell everyone what to do. They are the bosses of a movie. They tell people that, no, that shark looks too big. Now its teeth look too small. Make the eyes wider, make them darker. The director is someone who has complete control over the direction of the movie. So they have a very important job. Finding Nemo was made in 2003. So it's actually a very old movie. It's 17 years old, okay? So part one, under the sea. What happened in this part? You were all emailed uh, several different parts of the movie. Part one, two, three, four, and five. Now can anyone remember what happened in part one? How does the movie start off? Simon, can you give me a clue? Where does the movie start? It starts in the cold and, and the sun just, just goes and the son tells that to go to school and then they see uh, uh, a stingray and they go, go on the stingray and go to school. Like Very stingray. good, Simon. Perfect. That's really, really good. Now we're just missing one part at the very beginning before Nemo is born. We have Coral and Marlin. So we have Nemo's dad and Nemo's mom. Now what happens to Nemo's mom? Can we remember? Nemo's dad is playing with uh, Nemo's mom. They're joking around. They're playing and pushing each other and teasing each other. Then Coral's mom goes out of the coral, out of the anemone. And what does she see? Dammy. Uh, you see a giant shark. Go. And the shark eat her. Very good. Now, it's not actually a shark, guys. That type of animal is called a barracuda. So it's not a shark, it's a barracuda, but well done, Dami. So what we've just said is in the beginning, we have Nemo's mom and dad, and unfortunately, Nemo's mom gets eaten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly run through the important parts of the movie 
for the people who did not see it. We're going to just quickly run through the important parts of the movie right now. So let me share my screen with you. The movie, okay, so we start off in, so they're at the drop-off. They get an anemone in the drop-off. That's where they live, okay? And they're very happy playing and joking and running around. They look at all their babies. They've got 400 baby eggs waiting to hatch and they can't wait to start their new family. So they're playing and then they go outside and they see the barracuda, okay? Now Coral, Nemo's mom, is looking at the baby's eggs. She's looking down and Marlin says, no, 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 come back into the house, it's okay. But she does not listen. She is so protective of her babies that she jumps down to help them. Unfortunately, the barracuda is too strong. He hits Marlin, he gets knocked out, and when he wakes up, he finds that all the eggs are gone, and so is Coral. So he's very upset. But then suddenly, he looks down and he sees one egg. And this little egg turns out to be Nemo. Now this bit's quite important, so have a look. He's got one egg left. And when he turns him around, he sees this scratch. This scratch is because obviously there was an attack. The barracuda has tried to eat all the eggs, but missed one. So Nemo, when he was just an egg, he was thrown around and he hurt his left fin. Okay, he hurt his left side. That's why Nemo has a smaller fin and they call it his lucky fin because it was damaged when he was just a baby. And Marlin says to Nemo, I promise I will never let anything happen to you, okay? So he's very protective of his son. And then we skip forward. And like Simon said, it's his first day of school. He's very excited. And his dad is also excited for him. But his dad is also very nervous. Okay, so he's on his first day of school. And we learn about Marlin. What we learn about Marlin is that he's very, very, very nervous. He's always saying, wait, 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 hold on, be careful, don't do this, don't do that. He's extremely protective of Nemo. Then when we get to school, we meet Bob, Ted, and Bill. Bob, Ted, and Bill are Nemo's classmates' dads, okay? So we meet them, and then we meet Nemo's classmates. So let's have a look at Nemo's classmates. So we meet Sheldon, Tad, and Pearl. So these are Nemo's classmates, and they're friendly and talkative with Nemo. They're a bit curious about him and his lucky fin. Then the kids go on, and they meet Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray is a type of stingray. He's actually an eagle ray, and Mr. Ray is a really fun teacher. He's always singing and joking with the kids. He's very energetic. He's a science teacher. And you can hear him singing. Okay, so he's asking a science question. This shows us that he is a science teacher. So Nemo gets on board and they all go exploring, okay? Um, however, Marlin finds out where they're going. They're going to the drop off. Now, the drop off is where uh, Coral was eaten by a barracuda. That's where they first lived. So Marlin is not happy that they are going there. He is so worried that something bad will happen to Nemo. So when he finds out, he gets really angry. Look. The drop off? So he gets very, very angry and he goes after Nemo, okay? Then when they get to the drop-off, the three friends, Sheldon, Pearl, and Tad, they joke around and tease each other about swimming out to the boat. They say, look at me, I'm going out to the boat. I'm not scared. So they're teasing each other. 
Then Marlin comes along and finds Nemo and says, oh, you were going to swim out there. He gets very, very angry and he embarrasses Nemo. He says, you can't swim well. You don't have a good fin. He's yelling at Nemo because he's worried. See, and he always says, you can't do anything, Nemo. You can't swim well. You can't do this. This really annoys Nemo. And he says, I hate you. Nemo turns around to his own dad and says, I hate you. This is a horrible thing to say, but Nemo is just so angry about how his dad has embarrassed him. Then Nemo feels so angry, he wants to annoy his dad. He wants to prove a point. So what he does is he swims out to the boat. He goes up to the boat. He's swimming up, up and up. As you can see, his dad is saying, get back here now, because it's very, very dangerous. But Nemo doesn't listen. He gets to the boat. He gets his fin. So his dad's saying, if you put one fin on that boat, don't you dare touch the boat. And Nemo gets his fin and touches the boat. So he's really being naughty here. He's doing everything his dad says not to do. Then he starts to swim back and something awful happens. <gasps> A human scuba diver comes down and finds them. Uh-oh. The human takes a picture with the flash on the camera. The flash on the camera is very bad for fish. It really hurts their brain. It's so bright, it confuses them, so they can't see anything like this. It's all fuzzy, okay? So then Marlin's really scared. He swims after his son, but it's too late. The fan on the boat goes on. The engine starts and the bubbles blow him away. So that's really not good. And that was the first part of the movie. That's okay. So they are all the important parts that happened in the movie. Okay. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. So everyone have a look. So what is the story structure? Okay. So fiction stories follow a plan. Each story tells who it is about. So the characters, where it happens, which is the setting and what happens, which is the plot. So in the beginning of the story, we introduce the characters and the setting. In the middle of the story, the characters face a problem. That's what keeps viewers and readers engaged and interested. At the end of the story, the characters find a way to solve their problem. So we can think of the story structure a bit like a story mountain. So when you first set off climbing a mountain, this is when the story begins. You're introducing the characters and the setting, getting to know a bit about the background of the story. Then you keep going up. It intensifies. The plot develops. A problem or a conflict arises. The viewers are really interested now. Then we have the climax. The problem reaches a high point. There's lots of action. It's very suspenseful. You're on the edge of your seat. <gasps> Will Nemo ever get back with his dad? Who knows? Then the tension starts to decrease. The problem is being sorted out. So there's less action, but you're still engaged. And then at the end of the movie, the problem is finally solved. So the, the watcher or the viewer, they feel good. They feel like they've just watched a really good, happy film. That is what we can think of when we think of the story structure, but we'll learn more about that in the next coming weeks. Okay, what is a setting? Well, we all know that the setting is where a story takes place. Who can tell me, where does Finding Nemo take place? Okay, Kaki. Um, finding Nemo's, Nemo's take place in the oceans. Good girl, yes. well done. It takes place in the ocean. Well done, Kaki. Now, can anyone tell me what country it takes place in? Is it in the ocean in Vietnam? In the ocean in China? Ba. Nemo, Daddy, go down the darkest zone and see an angel fish. Good, good. Yeah, you're right. He, that is, that's later on in the movie. Good. Well done, Ba. But can anyone tell me what country? Mooney. 
Australia. Good girl, Mooney. Well done. It takes place in Australia. So mainly in the Great Barrier Reef. Okay, so the Great Barrier Reef is a part of Northern Australia and it looks like this from the outside. There, it is the largest area of coral reef in the world. So it's so beautiful. Many animals and many different types of coral and plants live here. It's filled with lots of different species. Yes, Nancy? The, the, bear, the Great Barrier Reef is so big it can be seen from space. Good girl. Amazing fact, Nancy. The Great Barrier Reef is so big you can see it from outer space. Okay, so this is the area. It's so beautiful. Lots of different types of fish, lots of different animals, and lots of different plants. So this is where finding, sorry, this is where Nemo lives. And this is mainly where the movie is set in Australia and in the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Amazing work, guys. Okay, now moving on to the characters. Well, we all know that characters are the people or animals in a story. Um, they, a main character is the most important character in the story. So who do you think are the main characters in Finding Nemo? Um, Zwiming. Nemo's dad. Good. Well done. Nemo's dad, Marlin, and Nemo. So Marlin and Nemo. Well done, guys. Okay, so these are the characters that we have met so far. So Bo and Jenny, I would like you to get out your pen and write this down. But the rest of you, we're just going to go through it. And you can write this down in your own time. So we're just going to quickly go through the characters we've met so far. Who is this? This is Nemo's mom. What's her name? Can anyone remember? Shout it out if you know. Oh. Coral. Good. Well done. Clever cookies. Coral. So, Ba and Jenny, I want you to use your pen and write this down as fast as you can. Okay. Who is this? Marlin. Good. I can hear some people saying Nemo, but this isn't Nemo. Nemo has a small fin. This is Marlin, Nemo's daddy. Well done. Who is this? Shout it out. Nemo. 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 Very yo, yo. good. Well done. Okay, who remembers this person's name or this octopus's name? Ted. Ted. Then we have Bob. 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 Well done. Who can remember this this fish's name? Bill. 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 Well done, guys. Very good memory. So we have Ted, Bob, and Bill, the three dads that we met. Then we have their children. Who remembers what the octopus's name is? The girl. Uh, Huh? Pearl. Her name is Pearl. Who remembers what Bob's son is called? Okay. And next we have Bill's son and his name is Tad. Okay. So we only briefly got introduced to them. So we might not remember their names and that's okay. These characters are not main characters. They're only in the movie for a small bit. Marlin and Nemo are the main characters. So they're the names that we really need to remember. So we've got Coral, Marlin, Nemo, Ted, Bob, Bill, Pearl, Sheldon, and Tad. Who is this? What's the teacher's name? Everyone shout it out. Very good. Well done. Mr. Ray. So we have all of the characters we've met so far. So Jenny and Bo, please write them down as quick as you can. Perfect. Well done. Okay, guys. So what we have learned is some of the characters. Now, what I want to look at for the rest of the lesson is character traits. Now, you might be thinking, what is a character trait? Well, a character trait describes what a character's personality is like often has to be inferred through the character's thoughts, words, and actions. So what that means is we can make an inference, we can make a conclusion based on what the character thinks, what the character does, and what the character says. So character traits are adjectives we can use to describe the characters. So let's try and do that together. Let's start with coral. So coral is what? What kind of animal is coral? Jenny? A fish. Good girl. She's a special type of fish. She's a clownfish. Okay, so that's what Nemo, Marlin, and Coral are. They are clownfish. And who is coral? Bo. Coral is... Um, 
She's a mommy. Nemo isn't she? mom. Good job. Well done. Carl <laughs> is Nemo's mom. So she is Nemo's mother and Marlin's wife. Now, what are her character traits? What is she like as a character? Is she evil and ugly and mean? Is she loving and kind and brave? Is she hilarious? Is she talkative? Is she happy? What would you use to describe how she is? So from the little bit that we get to know of her, what are some adjectives you would use to describe her? Nancy. Carl is happy and she's a loving and brave mom. Perfect. Nancy, can you tell me why you think she's loving and brave? Yeah, she's brave for the thing that, that she uh, saw, saw the fish, which means the barracuda. Mm -hmm. And she stands up and then uh, um, Marlin says to her go, to go back, but she's so protective that she just stays there. Very and good. She's well loving done. because she, she likes to joke around with Marlin and then uh, say the names for, for the little ones. Good girl. Lovely answer. Perfect work, Nancy. And well done, Simon. I can see you chatting in the chat box. She loves her babies. That's how we know that she's loving and caring and brave. So well done. She is brave, loving, caring, and protective. She's super brave because even though the big fish was there, she was willing to risk her life to try to save her babies. She's loving because she jokes around with her husband, Marlin. She's caring again because she tries to protect her babies. And she is protective because she does anything that she can to try to save her babies, although it did not help, unfortunately. Okay, great job, guys. Okay, so this is Marlin. Marlin is also a clownfish. He is Nemo's father. Now, what are some adjectives we can use to describe Marlin? We could talk about two different times that we've met him. So we know him before the incident. So what is he like before Coral dies? when it's just him and Coral in the anemone. What is he like? Is he sad and scared and worried? What do you think? Kaki. He's, he is scared about Nemo because he don't want his baby to he doesn't die. Want, he doesn't want his baby to die. Good girl. Okay, so that's after. That's after Coral dies. But before Coral dies, what would you say that he was like? What kind of words um, would you use me. before Carl dies? Yeah, go ahead, Kaki. He, he likes to jokes. With, mm -hmm. He likes to jokes. Good with girl. His wife. Good girl. Lovely. He likes to joke with his wife. So he's playful. So before the incident, he is happy, brave, and playful. He's just joking around and having a good time with Coral. But after, after Coral dies and he loses 399 of his babies, then what is he like? How does he act? Michael, can you tell me? He is sad. Sad. I'm worried. Well done, Nancy. He's worried. He is sad. He is worried. What else? What else can we think of? Sad, worried, dreaming. He is sad, worried, and afraid. Sad, worried, afraid. Good. Why do we know that he's sad, worried, and afraid, dreaming? Because he is afraid of Nemo. And he wants to protect Nemo because Nemo has hurt himself already. Good. So he's not afraid of Nemo, but he's scared of Nemo being hurt. He doesn't want anything to happen to Nemo because he's already been through such a lot of drama and a lot of trauma. So after Coral's death, he is worried, overprotective and caring, maybe a bit too much. You know, he doesn't let Nemo do anything by himself because he's so worried about him. But that's not very good for Nemo. Nemo needs to be able to do things by himself. Okay, who's this? This is Nemo. So Nemo is also a clownfish. Nemo is Marlin and Coral's son. What are some adjectives we can use to describe Nemo? Everyone go to the chat box. Everyone go to the chat box and type in some words to describe Nemo. I'm going to go first. I'm going to say that he's playful. 
he likes to play with his dad. He's like, come on, get up, dad. Time for school. It's time for school. So everyone go to the chat box and type in a word that describes Nemo. My word is playful. So type in a word that describes Nemo. Happy, good, brave, happy, scared after he is caught. Yeah. Naughty. Okay. So we spell naughty like this. Well done. He's naughty. He's so angry with his dad that he goes and he acts in a very naughty way. Exciting. Good. So he's excitable. Good, guys. Well done. Sad. Yeah, he's sad after he's caught. He's scared after he's caught. He's sad, but he's very excited about school. He's happy. He's brave. He swims all the way up to the boat. Good. Well done. Oh, Michael. Well done. Adventuresome. Brave. Afraid. Good job, guys. Okay. Lovely. You've all got a lot of adjectives. Now let's look at the screen. Nemo is energetic, curious, playful, cheerful, and eager. So energetic means he has lots of energy. He wakes up in the morning and he says, come on, dad, it's time for school. It's time for school. He's very excited and energetic. He is curious. He asks his dad lots of questions. He says, Dad, how many, shark, uh, how many teeth do sharks have? And his dad says, I don't know. I've never met a shark. And he's like, Dad, Dad, how old do sea turtles live? He says, I don't know. If I ever meet a sea turtle, I'll ask him. So he asks lots of curious questions about other creatures in the sea. He's playful. He jokes around with his dad. He's cheerful. He seems like a very happy young boy. And he's eager. He's eager to learn, eager to go to school and meet some friends and just kind of get outside of his dad. Okay, so then the next people that we meet, we don't learn much about them because it's such a brief encounter. But we meet Bob. Bob is a seahorse. He is the dad of Sheldon. He is friendly and talkative. We don't learn that much about them but we do know that he says hello to Marlin and you know he says so how are you and you know he just kind of talks him around his first day then we have Ted Ted is an octopus he is Pearl's father he is kind and friendly again he's just talking to Marlin talking to the kids and getting to know everyone then we have Bill Bill is a long-nosed butterfly fish he is Tad's father, and he is also friendly and talkative. He tries to ask Marlin to tell some jokes. He says, come on, you're a clownfish. That must mean you're funny. So all of the other dads are friendly and talkative. Then we meet Pearl. So these are Nemo's classmates. She is also an octopus. She is the daughter of Ted. She is playful, curious, and friendly. Then we meet Sheldon. Sheldon is a seahorse. He is the son of Bob, and he is playful and also friendly. Then we meet Tad. Tad is a long-nosed butterfly fish too. He is the son of Bill. He is friendly and he calls himself obnoxious. He says, I'm obnoxious. The word obnoxious means unpleasant. Obnoxious means not nice. So we know that Tad thinks that he is not nice. So we're thinking that maybe he's not such a good friend. He says that he's obnoxious. The last person that we meet is Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray is a blue and white spotted eagle ray. That is the type of animal that he is. So he's similar to a stingray or a manta ray. He is a science teacher and he is jolly, playful, clever, lyrical, and energetic. So jolly means very happy. He comes into class and he's like, hello, explorers. He's playful because he he um, lands on all of his students and he jokes around. He says, where are all of my students? And they laugh and giggle and they say, we're under here, we're under here. He's very clever and lyrical. Lyrical means that you like to make songs. So he's always singing about the deep blue sea and he is very clever because he explains lots of scientific things to the students. He's also very energetic and he seems like a really good teacher to be around. So these are all the characters that we've met so far. So what I was going to have you do for homework was this. I was going to ask you all to draw a line to the correct character and pick one adjective to describe the characters. Now, because you don't have your notebooks today, 
you don't have any homework, okay? What we're going to do is we'll start off by doing our homework together in class tomorrow. So we'll complete this tomorrow instead of for homework. But I just wanna make sure that you guys know it's very, very, very important for you to print out your notebook. So please make sure that today you ask your mom or dad to print this for you, whether it's in work or you have a printer at home. It's super important that you print out your notebook. Today, I want you to go home and I want you to watch part one of the clip, okay? Your homework for today is to print off your notebook and to watch part one of the movie. Just part one, it's only 15 minutes long. You don't need the whole day to watch it, just 15 minutes. I want everyone to watch part one of the movie and to print off your notebook, okay? So today there is no homework. All the homework that I want you to do is to print off your notebook and to watch part one. Okay guys, on that note, we are running out of time or we have ran out of time. So I'm going to say goodbye to you all and I will see you tomorrow for Bye. another day of Finding Nemo Fun. Bye.